Hello! We are in the second trimester and I feel like we've been in the second trimester for quite a while now. So I was having a think about it and then I decided it makes sense for me to split up the second trimester a little bit. I was really excited to talk to you guys about the last couple of months and I figured I had another month and a half or so to go of the second trimester so splitting it up made the most sense to me and I'll do a little Q&A in it as well. So today's video is going to be from week 13 to week 22. We might as well do a little bump date and I just realized I'm pretty sure I wore these same pants in the first trimester video, which makes sense because lately I've been wearing the same thing all the time. I have like my section of clothing that fits me and are comfortable right now and I'm just re-wearing everything. So these are my Indigo Luna leggings. I'll link them for you guys if you want to check them out. I actually have a code. I'll link it below for 10% off if you want to check them out. So this is my 23 week bump. It really depends on what time of the day. Sometimes it's looking bigger, sometimes it's looking smaller. Right now it's pretty average of what it normally looks like. And I'm feeling pretty good as of right now. Today I'd say is one of my harder days out of kind of all the days that I've had recently. I'm a little bit more tired today and funny that this is the day that I decided to film, but I'm a little bit more tired, a little bit more groggy today. Things just feel harder today, but who knows if that's pregnancy or just like normal life because we all have ebb and flows of how our days go and how we're feeling. Before we get into the video, please take a moment to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. If you are watching my videos and enjoying them, you can just hit that subscribe button. There's also a bell button right next to the subscribe button, that's for notifications and you can set it to always so that you never miss a new video from me. If you have not seen it already, check out the vlog that I posted last week. It's about 35 minutes long, so it's definitely a longer vlog. You can cozy up with a cup of coffee or like what I love doing when I'm watching YouTube videos. So I love bringing like my laundry stack, putting on my favorite YouTuber and just doing my laundry while having a cup of tea and watching a longer vlog love doing that so that's something that you can do as well if you want some company while you're doing your laundry in that video i do a clothing baby haul i bring you guys along into the sleep out the little guest cottage that we're renovating and i give you guys a tour of that space i introduce you guys to lucy our new pet lamb so there's a lot of stuff in that vlog so definitely go check that out before we get into all of the symptoms, I do want to give a quick reminder that every pregnancy is different from the next. We are all different. Our bodies do different things during pregnancy. Some people have just a little bit of nausea. Some people have no nausea. Some people end up in the hospital because they have so much and they can't take anything down and they're so super ill. So as you can imagine, those are three vastly different experiences. And that means that all of the symptoms in between can be so different. And so if I experienced something that you didn't, that's okay. And if you experienced something that I didn't, that's okay too. Here we go with week 13. The first thing I wrote down was on and off nausea. Queasiness is still sticking around uneasy tummy. And this was really interesting for me because a lot of people told me that once the second trimester comes around, I'm gonna feel a lot better. And that did not happen for me. It eventually got better. Now I'm not nauseous anymore. And every once in a while, I just get that little feeling again of it. And I'm like, please don't come back, please don't come back. And it hasn't come back full force. I just get little moments of it. It's not bad at all. It's very mild, but I was still getting it pretty full on in week 13 and i remember just being a little bit bummed about that because i was like i thought it was just going to all go away in the second trimester and it didn't just magically all go away right then i did put here that the vomiting reduced this week but it did happen once or twice so it seems like my nausea was still sticking around my vomiting was getting better but was still around as well scent is still superhuman this was something that was continuous and it still lingers the sort of superhuman scent that sounds amazing but actually you don't want it <laughs> it sounds like a superpower but a superpower that you don't want because being able to smell everything and even some things you can smell so well that they just smell bad but they normally when you're not pregnant smell good 
So it's, it's not a fun, it's not a fun symptom. And that was lingering around getting more energy some days and others I am exhausted. So this is something that definitely started kicking off a little bit more. I was not always exhausted as I was in the first trimester. I was starting to get more energy on some days and then the next day I would be completely exhausted. And there was no rhyme or reason as to why some days were better than others. And even now it's kind of the same thing. Like when I woke up this morning, I was so tired and there was really no reason why I should have been so tired in particular this morning because the rest of the week I was waking up with energy and I didn't do anything last night that would have made me more tired this morning or anything like that. It's just with pregnancy, what I'm really starting to notice is there's no rhyme or reason to the symptoms. There's no rhyme or reason to the exhaustion. It just kind of happens and it ebb and flows. Some days are good, some days are not so good. And you really can't figure out why or what you're doing that's causing it to fluctuate. And the truth of the matter is that you're really not doing anything that's causing it to fluctuate. Your body is just fluctuating and it's changing and it's doing different things all the time. And sometimes your body just might be more exhausted because it's doing something particular that week that or that day that you don't know about and it's making you exhausted. I wrote mild period like cramping and stretching. That's really interesting for me to look back on because I haven't had period like cramping at all in a long time, but I definitely was getting that in the first trimester around implantation and so on. And it's interesting to see that it was still happening in the first week of the second trimester that I was getting period like symptoms um, in terms of cramping. And then stretching is something that definitely kicked off in the second trimester and has been pretty continuous. Sort of this like stretching feeling around ligament pain and I get more into that as we move forward into the second trimester. Headaches, nipples tingling and burning. These are all things that were happening in the first trimester as well. So I was pretty familiar with them by this point. Congested and tension headache is pretty consistent. I still get congested. I actually feel congested right now. Today I've been like, do I have a cold? But I don't. I just get congested. I sneeze. Sneezing is a symptom of pregnancy as well. It's pretty common, which is really interesting because I realized I just kept sneezing more. I looked it up, definitely a symptom of pregnancy and quite common actually. So you kind of just feel like you have a cold every once in a while. Week 14, vaginal discharge. That's one of your TMI, too much information. We're talking about symptoms and we're, we're gonna keep it real here because <laughs> I just want to be honest about what the experience is like, the good, the bad, the weird. And I remember this being quite shocking because it's kind of the most that I had ever seen even when I was getting my period regularly and stuff like that. And I looked it up as we do, good old Google, and Google ensured me that it was very normal and actually very healthy for your pregnancy. It's essentially your body preparing like your cervix and kind of like giving the baby what it needs and creating the space and the uterine lining and all that kind of stuff that you have very similar vaginal discharge that you have when you're on your period, the ebb and flow of your periods, like ovulation and stuff like that. But yeah, watery and um, more than usual. I put that my skin was starting to break out this week, which has been kind of up and down for me, which was pretty normal before I got pregnant anyways. There were days that my skin felt great or weeks that my skin felt great, weeks that didn't feel so good. The thing with pregnancy for me is that my pimples are a little bit more intense. Like there'll be like one pimple and it'll be bigger and it will hurt. Like this one I have on my chin here. I don't know, you can you can likely see it. it's very big. Um, and it hurts, it's not very fun. But this is a very hormonal place to get pimples. So 
it makes sense that's happening. I put a note that we went to the midwife this week and that we heard the baby's heartbeat, which was always so exciting. And I think that this one in particular was exciting because we had just done the 12 week scan a couple weeks earlier. And that was kind of the last time that we checked on baby. And then it was really nice to hear her heartbeat in the second trimester as we moved along. And I think it's really important for me to write down the good and the exciting moments because as much as I want to talk to you guys about the real and raw part of it, the not so fun part, I think it's really important to also talk about the good because there's so many wonderful things about pregnancy. And honestly, just recently I was saying to a couple different people in my life that like I'm really enjoying being pregnant if I'm totally honest. And I'm sitting here and I'm talking to you about all of these like difficult symptoms that are not so fun, but overall right now, I'm really enjoying pregnancy. And in the first trimester, that was really hard. And there were days where I was thinking, what is happening? But now I'm like, you know, a lot of people say that that's really common to in the second trimester to just start kind of feeling like, ooh, I got this. So for some people that doesn't happen. For some people they're sick the whole time. So the experience is very different from one pregnancy to the next. But for me personally, I am really starting to feel like I really love this experience. And so writing down the good is always really important to me. Appetite is coming back. Intense scent is getting slightly better. Less aversions to smell more energy, feeling the nesting urges. This is sounding like a good week for me. Week 14 is when things started getting a little stronger for me in, in a good way. Feeling the urges to nest, which the nursery is still completely empty. Like we, we have some baby clothes, but I'm still just kind of taking my sweet time. I want to find the dresser that I want, probably at a secondhand shop. I saw something today. I actually picked up couple nursery items today. I got like two little Beatrice Potter nursery paintings. One's a duck with a bonnet and one's a rabbit with a little blankie. It's so cute. And yeah, so I'm just slowly but surely getting some bits and bobs for the nursery. Not rushing it. We have time. But I started feeling the nesting urges in week 14 and those just kind of have been lingering, but they haven't been super intense. Fatigue is still going strong, especially after an insomnia night. <laughs> that hasn't happened to me in a while. I am very happy to say, um, but I do remember at the beginning of the second trimester having a lot of nights of just kind of like sleepless nights. I was starting to get a little bit more uncomfortable then and didn't really know how I wanted to sleep comfortably. Week 15. Random little resurgence of nausea every once in a while. Appetite increase, we love that. Itchy nipples, still currently experiencing that. Pregnancy hormones are making me obsessed with Lanka. That was something that happened in the first trimester. I cry whenever I think about how much I love him. Yeah, pregnancy hormones are really interesting because you can cry on the drop of the hat. And for me, I'm normally crying because of how much I love something. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm feeling little baby flutters. Oh, that's so sweet to look back on because now she's moving and wiggling everywhere. It's almost feeling kind of normal to me now, but I will say that I love every single second of feeling her move. Any kick, any movement, I feel a lot of it lately. She, I'm, I feel like I'm starting to understand when she sleeps and when she's awake and stuff like that. I honestly wish I could feel her all the time. Um, I guess be careful what you wish for because maybe I would start getting annoyed by that, but I love feeling her move. It's my favorite thing. So just hearing that I started to feel like the little flutters and it, that I'm, I'm pretty sure I wasn't, like now I know for sure when I feel her, but um, being able to start feeling her at week 15 is so sweet. Still gagging when I brush my teeth, yeah. <laughs> I think I mentioned this in the first trimester, but that's still a thing for me. It's not every time, but sometimes when I'm brushing my teeth, it's just a random gagging reflex because your gag reflex is a lot more like intense when you're pregnant because of 
the esophagus kind of like loosening up there's like a you know i'm not a doctor but from what i understand there's um a like bit i don't know what it's called in the top of your stomach that is open now as opposed to closed it has to do with your esophagus and it, that's what makes the acid reflux so much worse but it's also what makes your gag reflux a little bit more intense week 16 constipation is coming back so i think i had some relief for a while and then week 16 just brought it back i will say that it comes and it goes and then it comes back and then it goes it's still like that for me now some weeks i don't even think about it and then some weeks i'm like oh hi you're back so that's still pretty consistent for me now starting to expand at my ribs now yeah i started to actually feel like my bump moving outwards here as opposed to just being like below down here i started feeling it going like outwards here and i could almost like see it where my ribs were that my stomach was starting to push out that way and then i put very tired very tired and then round ligament pain on my right hip and i remember this lasting for a couple days at least um Round ligament pain is something that I know what it is now because I thought I had it before, but now I definitely know that I've experienced it um, in the second trimester. And it's sort of like this stretching, like if you get up too fast, especially like that's when it happens the most, then you feel this stretch and it's a pain, almost like a rubber band. It feels like a rubber band snapped. And you just kind of like got to like, ease out of it and just like breathe it through and just trust that it's okay and that it's you know it's something that is common to experience but sometimes when i felt it i'd be like oh my gosh is everything okay and then i would like walk a little bit and then it would just start to feel better week 17 feeling her move and feeling her little kicks this week which is just so cute and exciting because i remember when i really started feeling the kicks and the movement i was so excited about it and they were just weak enough at week 17 where nobody else could feel them but me and I got to the point this week where I knew that it was her because like when you're just starting to feel the flutters at first you're like is that gas is that or is that the baby and then once you actually feel a kick you're like that is something I've never felt before. That has to be the baby. And then I put vivid dreams, which is still consistent. Sometimes I don't remember any of my dreams, but every once in a while I wake up and I'm like, whoa, that dream was crazy. And I remember it perfectly. Heard her heartbeat again this week at the midwife appointment. She was kicking the Doppler. Yeah, this appointment was so cute. When she kicks the Doppler, like the midwife was like trying to find her heartbeat and she found it, but then baby was like, get out of my space um she was essentially just like kicking the doppler back which was really cute taking up my space i'm gonna let people hold it i'm much more relaxed this one this, uh, and i didn't see feel it in her. her this morning i did so i was like okay she'll be there today <laughs> So from one was like whoosh, 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 and then one stopped the bit. Yeah. So both are her heart rate, but one's her heart rate through her cord, and that's what over her heart. Go in it. So that's actually her over her heart. So cool. Yeah, that was cute. And then she will move away. it was cool to like just kind of hear her communicating in a way um with us and it was just very cute i put definitely getting extra pimples lately round ligament pain this week again alex felt her move for the first time this week it was very faint but he could feel it she moved around three times now she's moving all the time but 
so cute to have Alex feel. He still feels it like all the time. He'll just come over and like put his hand on it and he's like, it's just still amazing to us. <laughs> Week 18, best I've felt yet. Woohoo! Bump is bumping. Feeling a lot more symptoms this week. Little kicks and flips. When I started feeling the flips, it was really cool. I feel like this is something that not, and maybe, you know, the truth of the matter is that not every person, not every pregnant person feels kicks and movement the same way. I know some people that said that they've never felt, they never felt movement until the very end. I know that it really depends on where the placenta is placed. So there's an anterior and posterior placenta and if it's anterior i think i'm saying that correctly then it's between your stuff like your skin and the baby is your placenta and so the baby's just essentially kicking the placenta and so you're not going to feel it as much so it really depends my placenta is posterior so i can definitely i can actually now i'm starting to see her kicks like if she's kicking hard enough i can see my skin moving which is pretty crazy round ligament pain again this week electric shock nipples which is something that i talked about in the first trimester symptoms video i think i called it lightning bolt nipples where it's just like you just feel like a shock to your nipples hips and lower back hurting this week. This is something that comes and goes and I'm pretty positive it will come and go through the entire pregnancy. Right now I'm not experiencing it, which is great, but who knows what tomorrow holds. Week 19, so tired again. Constipation is coming back. Week 19 flew by. That's all I put for week 19. Week 20, first morning of week 20 the most beautiful moment in the car driving down our country road lambs jumping in the pastures all around us it was a blustery cold morning but the sun was starting to shine alex put on alexandra treliski plutu i'll put it on the screen because it is a beautiful song i'm remembering it i haven't listened to it since then and that was the first time that i heard it but it was beautiful it was essentially a song that made life feel like a movie. I think I posted it on my subscribers only Instagram post and told people to like go on a walk and listen to the song or on a drive because it made life feel amazing like a movie. And that's how I felt in this moment. So I wrote it down and now I'm sharing it with you guys. And then I put, there was a rainbow in the sky, a tear of joy streamed down my face. As you guys know, I've shared with you that we experienced loss before this pregnancy. So rainbows, of course, because she's our rainbow baby, are really significant to us. And I know for so many people who have gone through the same thing. So there was a rainbow in the sky, a tear of joy streamed down in my face. Life felt like a movie at that moment. These are the moments in life I decide not to record. Weirdly, have been having several days of and then i like left it i don't know what i was gonna say there but i do remember this moment very vividly and perfectly and the feeling that i had in that moment because i just felt so thankful to be in that moment that we were in i think we might have been driving to we were this was the first morning of week 20 so we were driving to our 20 week anatomy scan which ended up being a great scan everything was good with baby girl and seeing a rainbow in the sky on our way there was such a beautiful symbol and it was um a lot of reassurance and I just remember in that moment thinking like, this is the rainbow after the storm. This is like the, the beauty after the hard times. And I just remember feeling really, really happy and grateful in that moment. And that is all I put for week 20 because I think after the anatomy scan, I was just on a high that week of just feeling like, I can't believe we're here that like, we're here and um, 
it just felt really special. And I'm really glad I wrote down that moment because I think it's, like I said before, it's so important to remember all of the good because it is a magical experience even though there is hard things that we have to go through, that our bodies have to go through. We still, I choose to still remember like the magic in it because it is magic. Like just, I feel the same with like growing your own food, you know, where you're just like, you're starting with a seed and then you grow something and then you can eat it. It's amazing, it's magic. <laughs> and I know it's such a simple thing, but it's always been something that I thought was so cool. And like, that's how I feel about pregnancy. And I've always thought that before even experiencing it myself. I remember being so young thinking, like I've said before, I think I mentioned this um, when I did the announcement of just saying like, I've always thought pregnant women were like superhuman. They're superheroes. It's amazing. It's such an incredible experience. And so I just remember to always keep that in mind even when I'm having a hard time. Week 21, woke up to lower back pain. I think I overdid it yesterday. So I normally get lower back pain if I'm doing a lot of house chores, honestly. I wish it was something more exciting, but if I'm doing laundry, vacuuming, taking care of the house, like sometimes I go through these like cleaning surges where I'm like, I have the energy to clean, I'm just gonna go for it. And then the next day I'll be like, ooh, I think I overdid it. I'm starting to feel very connected to her. I already love her so much. That is still a consistent thing I feel now. I, it's crazy that I, I felt connected from the beginning if I'm honest, but I, that has just gotten even more and more intense as the weeks go by. I ended this week with lower back pain is consistent this week, which lets me know that I was experiencing lower back pain pretty much the whole week because I started it with that note. But then week 22, it says lower back pain is gone, which is great. Craving sweets, chocolate, and candy. I have been craving sweets so much more lately as of like, that was week 22. So week 23 as well, craving sweets. I'm in the craving sweets era of my pregnancy. I want, like today I had a muffin that had like strawberry banana and dark chocolate and it was everything. Yesterday I had a chocolate chip cookie. Like I really love like sweet, sweet baked goods right now and that's what I crave. I have like a little bit of caramel chocolate in the kitchen. So every once in a while I'll like, especially after dinner, I'll eat like a couple cubes of like caramel chocolate. I crave ice cream. I'm trying not to go crazy <laughs> with it all because too much sugar as we know is not good. But um, I definitely have been like wanting sweets more than usual. And I've definitely been letting myself do that because it's just baby telling me she's like we want sweets and i heard that it's really common when you have a girl to crave sweets because i'm not normally a sweets person if i'm honest like i love banana bread and chocolate and things like that but i don't normally crave sweets as much as i crave like savory spicy foods and stuff like that but lately i will choose a sweet over anything Appetite is increasing. You can probably tell just by me telling you how much I want sweets. Sharp round ligament pain when I stood up quickly today. Yeah, that one scared me. Um, and I kind of mentioned this before, but I was standing up really quickly and I was like, I had to like stop and like hold my side. But I knew, like I said, I was just like, oh, this is this is round ligament pain. I've heard a lot about this and I thought I've experienced it, but this, I can tell is round ligament pain. And again, it's like a little rubber, it feels like a rubber band is snapping or stretching and you can tell it's your ligament and it's like in this specific area here. Um, and so you just know like, okay. And it's usually on one side. And from what I read, it's usually on the right. But I might as well just give you guys a little update of where we are today. 
baby is the size of a bundle of grapes, <laughs> which is quite big, honestly, in, in my brain, at least. It says baby's inner eye components have developed, helping her build a sense of sight, which is really cool. Baby has gotten so smart and coordinated that her sense of movement has developed. This is the size of her hand compared to what it will be at nine months, if you can see that, which is very cool. Still teeny tiny, but I am, I guess I'm 23 weeks and one day. Oh no, okay, I just refreshed it. I'm 23 weeks and three days. I thought I was four days, but no. 23 weeks and three days along, my friends, which is so exciting. I recently read that she can also hear in the room right now, which is awesome. So that's where we're at. As you guys know, today I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit more tired than I've been feeling, but I also think that's because a lot's been going on. We're actually going out of town tomorrow morning, and I'm definitely gonna vlog our trip. We're going to Topa, and then we're going to Auckland um, for a work thing, but the Topa, will, we will be seeing family, and then we're gonna go to Auckland, and then we'll be back and then we have a midwife appointment right when we get back. Because I guess I thought that this video just wasn't going to be long enough, I asked you guys to send in questions yesterday. I'll do a little bit of them here so I don't keep you guys for too long. But if you are still here, thank you. Let me know in the comments below that you're still here. Give this video a thumbs up if you're still here because that means that you're enjoying this. Um, I hope. I hope you wouldn't watch it this long if you're not. I am just going to randomly pick some of these questions and answer them, and I will save some for another video as well. I'm gonna start with this question from Shania Cross because it's specifically regarding the second trimester, and I think it's a really good question. She said, how did you feel in the second trimester? I have anxiety not being able to know how baby is, also not being able to feel baby move all the time. Different to no symptoms. I really like this question because this was something that was really hard for me at the beginning of the second trimester, and I didn't really put down the anxieties that I was feeling. So once week 14 came around, especially, where I started feeling a little bit better, but I wasn't feeling the baby move. I was definitely having more anxiety about, I hope the baby's okay. I'm happy that I'm feeling better, but there's something quite interesting about pregnancy where, yeah, it doesn't feel good to have the nausea and you want it to go away, but there's something satisfying, which is just so crazy to say about it because you know that it's doing something. And I know other women have experienced this where you're like, oh, I'm not nauseous anymore. And that's good. But I, I kind of like the nausea because I know that things are happening. So that's how I was feeling as, as I started getting better before I started really feeling the baby move. And I know that a lot of people don't even feel movement until like 20, 223 even further down the road and so that is quite a long time of just having to trust that everything's okay because you're feeling better and there's really nothing telling you that the baby's okay and you're not getting as many scans as you were at the beginning and you're not having a heartbeat with a doppler as often or anything like that so you really are in this phase of like, I hope everything's okay. And I think the way that I dealt with it was to just like recognize the anxiety about it and to just accept that I felt this way and to realize that it's because I care and that's a beautiful thing. And I think that it's important to just remember that you've come really far if you're in the second trimester and your body is doing its thing regardless of what you're doing, which I think is one of the craziest things about pregnancy because there's so much in life that we can control with our bodies, but with pregnancy, there's not much we can do to make sure that, you know, besides like eating well and like having a good mental space as best you can and some movement, you know, all those things that we're told um, in the best way that we can, right? We're, we don't have to be perfect and we, it's really difficult to, stay consistent on all of those things when you have so much going on in your body. So show yourself some grace about 
like the physical aspects of what you're doing or not doing, but also show yourself some grace when it comes to how you're emotionally feeling because it's okay to feel anxious about things. Just move through them, trust the best that you can your body and just keep looking forward to those appointments whenever you go in to just get that reassurance. I know for me, it's always such a great reassurance, but I will say like the next day you're like, okay, I hope baby's still okay. So I get it. It is, it's a wild ride. Literary Femme sent me a question that says, how did you handle the wait until the first doctor's appointment? I didn't handle it very well at all. <laughs> um, especially because we had experience loss prior to this. I actually have a video of me that Alex got at our first ultrasound. And it, it just feels like the longest time to have to wait. We waited till week seven and we found out we were pregnant at week three and a half. So it just felt like the longest time. And I was so incredibly anxious. And the doctor recognized that, like I told her our experience and um, we experienced a loss at week seven after the ultrasound. So it was really nerve wracking for me. And I honestly don't have tips on how to not feel this way because I felt so anxious and so scared. And I can show you the video here of like how I felt. And thank you. It's okay, you're totally fine. It's so, that's so exciting. That is very exciting. But I completely understand you feeling very worried about the skin. Can you see it clicking mm. in the arm? Oh, so that's perfect. Wow. So that's good. Good job, baby. Yeah, good job, <laughs> mum and baby, I reckon. Both of you. We're getting through the last few weeks waiting for this damn scan, hey? Yeah. That's the hardest part. The, nausea, the, the extreme nausea has been helping. helped. <laughs> no, no, it's ridiculous, isn't it? But that yeah. is, it does give you some... There's, otherwise, there's very little sort of signs to hold on to, is there? Yeah. It's really hard. Now, I'm just going to print that out for you. Cool. I'm going to measure this lovely little heart ticking away. As soon as I saw the heartbeat, I felt such a sense of relief and that's the only thing that made me 